All right, Top Billin, let's get into some comparisons, some real football head type stuff, man. Comps can be extremely fun to do, but they can be extremely annoying to view uh, when you have a channel like mine and everybody wants to throw them out, even though I feel I be giving some of the most perfect comps you can have, right? I remember giving the Alex Smith comp to one Joe Burrow, and I was like, man, that's got to be the most perfect thing ever. I mean, they had just about every attribute that you could imagine virtually the same and people still have to rock with whomever is the most popular or somebody who they know or somebody who's they played on the same team or something like that where you got to be able to think outside the box and go behind yourself or have vast football knowledge to do really good comps because not everybody's comparable to somebody who's popular now or somebody who's been popular the last year or two or something like that those aren't good comps in my opinion so as a matter of fact let's break down what makes a good comp what more can I say? Top billing. All right, here we go, man. A top billing comp guide. First and foremost, you must have virtually similar height weight measurements. You cannot do the goofy shit. Well, somebody once told me like Tyreek Hill was similar to Randy Moss. I'm like, come on, man. You can't make that type of comp. One dude is six foot four. The other dude's like five foot four. Like that's not a good comp. You can't. Don't do that to yourself, man. Come on, man. So a good rule of thumb is to always stay within, I would say, two to three inches of height and maybe like 10 pounds of weight, something something like that, right? It's got to be something in the same region. You cannot have just the similar uh, measurements when it comes to stuff like that because that is extremely important to me if you're making a comparison to somebody because that's the makeup of that person as far as their physical stature goes. All right, next, you cannot disregard a standout trait of a player. I get way too many of the, oh, he's like so-and-so minus the 4-2 speed. I'm like, what the fuck? What do you mean minus the 4-2 speed? That's what makes that player that player. He has 4-2 speed. I'm sorry. There are so many players who have played the game of football that everyone's virtually a retread. It really is. Everyone, someone has somebody that came before them that is similar to them. That's just the nature of the beast because the football football has such a long history to it. You can find somebody that is within the same height, weight range and has these standout traits or something like that. Somebody's there out there for you. You just got to think outside the box. But you cannot say he's like so-and-so but with – uh about eight inches less of height or, or he's so-and-so, but much weaker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't do that. that, that that's not going to fly. I right, last one. I frown upon comps to players from the same school. <laughs> like, come on, man. Not everybody plays the same. They didn't go and get everybody the same at these schools. They all, all these guys really have their own type of standout trait. And it's just weird like that, man. Like, not everybody from from Alabama's Julio Jones or not everybody from LSU is Odell Beckham. You know what I mean? You, you got to go beyond that, right? So that I, I call those fanboy comps. Like they can't see past their own school. That's usually what it is. Or they can't see past colors or so. I don't know what it is, right? And um, don't make comps to people who are like the same age. Like somebody recently told me Devontae Smith was the next Jerry Judy. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Devontae Smith might be older than Jerry Judy for all we know. That doesn't even make sense. They're not even the same type of player. It's just that type of thought process right there, man. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this comp for my man, Jamar Chase. All right, to me, the best attribute for Jamar Chase we see right here is his ability to work the quick game and give you something explosive out of it. His yards after catch is phenomenal, man. Absolutely phenomenal. Also have to give a shout out to his ability to catch traffic with standing. It does not matter, right? If the ball is in his vicinity, he's going to come down with it. And he is the most physical player out there on in the defensive backfield or on the third level period when he's catching the ball out there. And of course, he's a complete nightmare the further the ball goes down the field as well. He's just... He's just a danger every single spot on the field, despite not having 
incredible athleticism as far as being explosive. Now, we don't know his time speed. It could very well be in the four fours, but it was said something like he ran like a four six or something like that at a Nike combine. But man, it doesn't matter. You see here, look at his ability to go up and get it. But you never really see him completely separate from people and run downfield. So I was struggling with a comparison. I was thinking something along the lines of uh, Sammy Watkins. But Watkins just used to blow by people as well. He could do a lot of the same stuff. He would blow by people. Um, I was thinking like an A.J. Brown. But then I'm like, man, I got just the perfect person for him. And that is one Golden Tate. Y'all remember him from Notre Dame. He was absolutely destroying college football. He's had a very good NFL career was with the Seattle Seahawks. Really killed it with the Detroit Lions when he got with Matthew Stafford. Um, he's one of these guys, right? I know you guys are going to poo-poo this because he's not super famous and super popular. And you want to compare everybody to DeAndre Hopkins or Michael Thomas or whomever is in the news is super popular. But that's not the aim of a comp. You want to get the player who most closely resembles that particular player you're talking about. And Golden Tate is definitely that for Jamar Chase. Film here in a second, but as you see right here, five foot ten, 199 pounds. Obviously, Jamar Chase, 6'1, 200 pounds. So they're in the same wheelhouse right there, right? I don't like to compare cats who are 6'1 to cats who are 6'4. And I consider 6'1 to be on the high end of where guys who are 5'10 and 5'11 are, right? So I compare 6'1 guys to people who are below them. And then you got above 6'1. That's when you start to get into your larger receivers like a T.O. and Julio Jones and Megatron and those guys. So I don't see Jamar Chase as that. But Golden Tate, 4'4'2 speed. We don't know exactly what Jamar Chase will run, but it could be around there. Maybe a little little slower. Somewhere in the 4'4 four, four range could be 4'5, something like that. But very similar right there. But the way they play is exactly the same, man, exactly the same. To be a Jamar Chase or a Golden Tate, you need to have some running back in your background and be able to break tackles and create yak. Nobody does it better than Golden Tate. All right, you know we got to start with your man going up and getting the ball over people, right? Five foot ten, it does not matter. His vertical leap is crazy. I know 35 inches doesn't seem like a crazy vertical leap, but that's just a testing vertical leap. His football jumping ability is spectacular. Look at this. Man, jumping up, skying over Byron Jones with one hand catching the ball. That's spectacular, man. This kid is a goddamn ferocious animal. You can't tell me that's not some Jamar Chase type stuff. All right, but of course what makes Golden Tate is that yak. His run after catch is phenomenal. It's the best in the NFL, especially with Steve Smith Sr. retired. Look at that. And he always finishes on his feet, at least virtually most of the time, he finishes on his feet, man. He's just running through guys, and they can't get him on the ground. No matter. Look at that, man. Look at that. He's good for breaking at least the first tackle on just about every play, but he always gets you at least two or three in there. Look at that. Just cannot bring this dude down. That's that running back. He was a high school running back, converted to receiver at Notre Dame, and somebody told me Jamar Chase had a little running back in his background as well. And you can definitely tell out there on that field. Same kind of deal right here, running the out route. When you can catch him off the line of scrimmage, being able to have him play kind of the Z receiver type, that's what he's going to get you right there, broken tackles and gag. You know, how, you know how much quarterbacks love that? He's like a quarterback's best friend, right? You can throw, throw him a little out route like Carson Wentz just did right here. Boom, and he'll take it another 25, 30 yards for you. Like, come on, he's just powerful like that. Look at him come out the line of scrimmage here. Just look at the power through the core. Same thing with Jamar Chase. When you watch Jamar Chase, I want you to look at his lower half. Like, look at his uh, calf muscles and everything. Definitely built like a running back. You see how stocky Golden Tate looks here. That's why it's just tough for these guys to catch him. They just, just slot right off the man here. Nope. Look, just too strong through the core. Lower half on swole. Great balance. Great power. Gonna break tackles, man. That's what he does. Then shifty as well. He can be shifty and he loves to finish just straight at you. Not too many receivers want to just finish straight at you. He'll run right into you. It does not matter to him. Look at him. Takes an act of Congress to bring this kid down. All right, check him out here from the slot running and out route. Look at the yak, man. Look at the power. Look at the transition. No load gather. Oh, look at him lulling to sleep. Love the safety to sleep and scored on something that I'm pretty sure they didn't think would be scored on here. See him off the line of scrimmage. Tough to press, right? Not a lot of people want to press Golden Tate. He's just too strong for that. 
I look how to run my man off here. Look at this. No load gather. Ball get down. He's open right there. Like, Ooh, damn. Hit my man with the with the transition. Made him. Oh, look at his ankle. Oh, that's back in the, the old school Marbury AI days right there. Making him break his ankle, bro. Detached from your own ankles. Now, look at this, right? I was going to come back to the ball right here. Then immediately pivot like this. Make you miss again. <laughs> come on. His jack is phenomenal. And then him in the open field, here's that running back coming into play. He breaking down right here. He's like, yeah, I got him. I got him. I got him. Load him to sleep, and his 0 to 60 is just better than yours. He gets up to speed really fast. He has that 4 4 2 long speed, but a lot of that is just how quick he is. Look at that. Broke two tackles like it wasn't nothing right there. He didn't even lay a hand on him. He was breaking down in space. That ain't sick. That ain't some Jamar Chase type shit. Right, I know you guys want to compare Jamar Chase to Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson and Harold Carmichael and Michael Jordan and Keem Olajuwon and shit like that. But come on, man. This is an apt comparison. Now, check this out. A little bit of the route running. I think Jamar Chase is a very good route runner. Not the best I've seen. Same thing with Golden Tate. Not the best, but very sound. I love this, right? Now, check out. Taking an inside approach to this out route to really sell Eli Apple on this. Eli Apple sucks anyway, but we get the deal. But look, no load, no gather. Bring it down. Now, look how I'm cut this angle right here. This is exactly what you want, kids. Cut that angle and sharpen it out. Go right down the line of scrimmage. What is Eli Apple doing? Eli Apple is getting twisted like one of them pretzels over there in super off-man coverage. Thank God he's gone. Eli Apple was terrible. But look at that. And, of course, you know what Golden Tate wants to do when he gets the ball? He wants to... He wants to gather right now and then square you up and see what he can do right there. But he wants to try to go through you. It does not matter. He's usually going to finish on his feet as well. But boom, hit Eli Apple, let him know. And of course, he's going to finish on his feet. Eli Apple don't know what's going on. All right, back in the slide here. You see him running it out. But check it out. Look at the hands and the ability to go up and go get it. Look at him. Bells Carson Wentz out right here. Just Wentz. Nick Foles. Bell's Nick Foles out right here. Look at this out right here. Errant pass by Nick Foles. Much too high. But look at him go up and get it. What I tell you about his in-game jumping ability. Those are some serious hops to go up and high point that bad boy on an out route when your momentum is taking you towards the sideline. Just great dexterity, great body control. And that's the same attributes that Jake Jamar Chase has. No doubt about that. All right, right here. In breaking route, going up in traffic. Look at that. Uh, found the void of the zone. Ooh, look at that. Didn't look like much, but check it out from this angle right here. You'll see him peering in your screen there. Now look. Wentz puts it up on him. Looks like it could be picked off, but it's high enough. Look at him go over the corner back there. Just <laughs> look at the body control, man. That's what I'm saying. The body control, balance, power, strength. Run after the catch, the hands, the route running. Uh, he has it all, just like a Jamar Chase, where you could probably say, man, not one aspect really stands out because he's solid in all areas. But if one did stand out, obviously it would be the yards after catch for both of these guys here. So let me know what you think about that particular comparison. Like I said before, I've been in this business long enough. I know exactly what people like. They want shit that's flashy. So if I'm not comparing him to somebody who's a superstar right now in the NFL, it's going to fall upon deaf ears, but real football heads, and I guarantee you football executives will see this shit and be like, damn, that is a great comparison. But as always, I'm open to suggestions. I know I'm going to hear Des Bryant. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really feel the Des Bryant. It's just something about that doesn't really sit right with me. Um, it's not a bad comparison by any stretch of the imagination, but I think the Golden Tate thing is a little bit better. I think Dez was a little bit more sudden of an athlete with a change of direction and certain, certain things like that. So I can see where some of the comparison comes from, but mm, not my favorite right there. So let me know some of the ones that you guys got and let me know what you think about the Golden Tate. All right. But it's your boy Murph, the Underground King. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.